hello and welcome guys welcome to my channel in this video i'm going to show you how we can use remote debugging for uh, you in visual studio 2019 okay so let's get started first of all you will need visual studio so go ahead search for the visual studio and if you can see over here you can download the community edition for free okay so go here and download community edition if you are just for doing this for learning purpose or you can purchase enterprise and professional editions as well after one month community edition will require you uh, for uh, it will ask you for sign in so just do the sign in and it will be free for a learning purpose okay so let's get started uh, once you have installed the community edition you download this thing there will be a web installer which will take a while and then it will launch UI like this and then you have to select community edition over here it will be by default selected and then you can download uh, these components so for this demonstration I had downloaded a couple of components already but for this demonstration you can just go ahead and download this dotnet desktop development that is more than enough for the video that I'm going to show you okay so let me just close this thing so you can see dotnet code is also included over here so let me just close this thing and then I will open visual studio now okay so this is the first time it is starting so it will take a while let's wait for the visual studio to launch there we go so you can see I'm just starting this visual studio I'm seeing this not now maybe later and then I'm choosing the dark mode I'll probably mention the a point where you can skip all these settings basic settings and you can just uh, see how uh, we can do the remote debugging using Visual Studio okay now just for that if I just search for remote debugging in Visual Studio and if I go over here so here is the blog uh, here is the link and then you can download these remote tools so my mine is visual studio 2019 so i'll just go ahead and download this remote tools okay now uh let me just select this english version Re remote tools for visual studio 19 okay 64 bit and download save this thing and you can see the download is started apart from that uh if i just duplicate this tab and go back one more time so you can see uh, we have this documentation over here which says what we need so we need remote tools then the requirements are the remote debugger is supported on Windows 7 and newer not phone versions of Windows Server starting with Windows Server 2008 the complete list of requirements are over here so this is how the structure is so we have a deployed app okay and then we have this remote debugger and then here we are in network and then Visual Studio is there as well okay so this machine is having Visual Studio okay and you, you can see on this machine we have a remote debugger and then we have deployed app over there so this is how the Visual Studio app will command from here and will de basically debug this app okay which is running on this machine and uh, let's see what are the requirements so Windows 10 is supported you can see supported operating system supported hardware configuration is mentioned over here supported network configuration is mentioned so if you read it out the remote computer and the visual studio computer must be connected over a network work group or home group else connected directly through ethernet cable debugging between two computers connected through proxy is not supported so if you are using any kind of proxy or something it's just not supported okay so be aware of that debugging over high latency low bandwidth connection such as dial up internet or over the internet across countries is not recommended may fail or be unacceptably slow okay so these are the mentionings to run the remote debugger from file share so you can see so this is optional thing so you can find the remote debugger this exe 
on a computer with Visual Studio Community Professional or Enterprise Edition. Some scenarios, the easiest way to set up the remote debugging is to run de remote debugger from a file share. For usage limitations, see this, this, this. Okay, find this exe in the directory, so it will be located over somewhere over here, and then share the remote debugger folder on the Visual Studio computer. So we'll share the remote debugger folder on Visual Studio computer. On the remote computer, run this thing from a shared folder. Follow the setup instructions. So these are the things. These are just documentation, guys. I'm not going to uh, show you this, but yeah, I'm going. This is optional thing. Okay. So I will be following this. So you can see set up the remote debugger. So this is how we can set up the remote debugger. And these are the uh, these are the things that we have to do basically. So if you see here on the remote computer, find and start remote debugger from the start menu. So we have to have remote debugger in that machine. If you don't have administrator permissions, then run as administrator. So we have to, uh, if you don't have the permission, then right click on this and run as administrator. Otherwise it just starts normally. So make sure we have to run it in enable elevated mode. So we have to run it in as an administrator. Okay. If you're planning to attach a process which is running, so okay so debugging can be done two ways right so first of all we launch the exe and then we attach the debugger to it second thing we start we hit the start button from the visual studio itself so uh, i can show you both but i will like to show you uh, let's see let's see how, how how the size of this video goes okay so if you're planning to attach the process which is running at as an administrator under the user account such as is right click on the remote debugger app and select run as administrator so the first time you start the remote debugger, the remote debugging configuration dialog box appears. So this box will be appeared. If the Windows Web Services API is not installed, we have to do this thing in uh, machine specific configuration. And that's just it. So we have we can configure and all the other things. So I can probably paste these links for you guys. Okay. So this is first link, which is uh, which tells us about requirements. And this is second links, which in which you can download this remote uh, tools as well. Okay, so you can see here my remote tools are already ready. Okay, this this is the exe for that, and let me just show you something. So I will just close this Visual Studio again, and I will now run this as administrator. Okay, or that is not needed. Let's check that out as well. Okay, so I have this VMware Workstation player, and I will be running my exe inside this thing. Okay, so let me just start this window so it's probably already uh, started i just have to yeah it is suspended so i'll play this thing and a whole new uh, windows 10 machine will be there up and running for me so whatever i'm going to develop will be executed in this vm okay using over using remote debugging so i will just go full screen for now and then i will copy this vs remote tools i will copy them to this remote machine so remember what I'm doing I'm just copying the Visual Studio remote tools which is for the version uh, 2019 which the Visual Studio that I'm currently using okay so you can see now uh, I will just drag drop oh, it's not working let me just check for the options Uh, it should be working because VMware tools are already installed so we'll just copy it yeah you can see now uh, this is my the, the machine you're see seeing over here okay this is my actual machine where I have Visual Studio 19 installed and this is my VM which is just uh, a machine where I want to run my exe okay so let's see let me just uh, align it so that you can really see properly or I can make it full screen as well but that's okay so this is a good enough uh, resolution so now on this machine okay which is purely Windows 10 machine let me just show you the difference as well so Windows R and here I will say command prompt and if I just show you host name 
you can see the host name of this machine is space explorer so this machine is space explorer and this is my main machine which I am using okay now in the space explorer machine this machine I will just run this visual studio remote tools okay and you have to accept the agreement and install them so these are the visual studio uh, remote tools for visual studio 2019 version okay which I am having over here now uh, let it install in the backend and let's create some sample app okay so I'm opening Visual Studio again this time it will launch uh, fairly fast because you already have the initial setup and now I will create a new project for this demonstration purpose okay and then we are going to create a simple console app and hello world program so not, not, not fancy stuff over here okay so here you can see console app.net core it can run in c sharp linux mac and windows etc etc i will just create this thing console app one this is the name of our application and let's see so they are almost done remote tools are almost installed on our machine and we have our sample project with us as well which we want to debug remotely on this machine So exactly like the Microsoft uh, pictureized this thing uh, showed in here. So now this is our Space Explorer machine which is having re remote debugger and it will have a deployed app. So I will move this app from here to that machine. Okay. So you can see the Hello World program is already there. I can just run this thing console app one and let's see if it is compiling and getting executed. So build got started and build got finished. Uh, there is no error it's just that I started it uh, before it was initializing so that's it so let me just try to run it one more time you can see build started again and this is your hello world program okay hello world so this is a simple application guys right so now I want to debug this I don't want to run this on here I want to when I click on this thing it should I should be able to run it this on this machine okay so a terminal should be launched here like this and it should display me hello world so let's see how we can do that so uh, remote tools are almost installed this this is a VMware machine guys so I just gave it 4 GB RAM so it might be slow but yeah for this demonstration it is uh, good enough okay now the fastest or the best possible way that I think it is is that now you are anyway going to have a connectivity established okay so either you can do you can do two things basically you can either say uh, let me just create uh, actually add something over here so that I can show you more so this is the hello world okay and then I will be waiting for an input over here at the end console dot read line okay read line that's it and then here I'm just going to uh, do an infinite for loop so or while true let's say so while true I will just print something like date time dot now dot to string or let's say date time dot now dot to string okay and if we see the overloads then we have this formatter as well and we have this format as well so I'll just format this thing and I will say sh just show me uh, minutes mm for minutes okay and ss for seconds and then I'm just going to do a thread dot slip thread dot slip for one second okay and this is going to be uh, uh, executed infinitely 
so if I just see over here then hello world 14 58 59 60 it's like a timer okay so I can show you both of the things so this is my code I will first of all I will comment this code I don't want to make it too complex so I will just I will put it over here but I will just comment this code okay now remote debugger is installed on this machine so first time what you need to do is you need to go to windows and you can see this remote debugger icon right click on this and say start uh, run as administrator more and you can see run as administrator option over here and I will click yes okay so if you uh, recall the documentation they have said the exact same thing so first time you launch this thing uh, the remote debugging configuration dialog bo box will appear okay and we have this configuration over here so if we check uh, if we take a look at that then windows web Serv services api is already installed and windows firewall will be configured to allow remote debugging so th this will take care of the firewall rules okay now uh, all you have to do is you have to check for the rules so now by default it is going to do a domain private and public so i will say i will not say do uh, you can go ahead with that but actually the right sh the right call should be since both are on the same network so domain should be same so that this is more than enough okay uh, but if you see here if you just uncheck this thing then uh, the configure configure remote debugging option is not getting there so this option you if you read inform or public network such as when computers are directly connected over the ethernet so in in my case you can see this is a VMware and we have this com VM already connected uh, like a Ethernet adapter so I have to check this thing okay and I will see configure remote debugging so this is going to what this is going to do is if you if I had to show you then you can manually go to firewalls okay firewall here and then you can manually add those inbound outbound rules but this this initial configuration menu is going to do it for us so if I can just show you advanced settings over here and then what you have to do is you have to add appropriate inbound and outbound rules for this so here you have inbound rules for incoming connections and outbound rules for outgoing connections okay so uh, there will be a couple of rules already here and there will be more more will be added after once we click on that so i'm interested in port so if you see here which port is going to be opened then if i just arrange it like this then you can see all the ports that are going to be open anyway so let me just click on uh click on this configure remote debugging button and this will automatically do, do uh, what it is needed whatever it is needed and you can see the same exe msv mon msv monitor or something started new server namespace explorer 4024 so this is the port number now if i again go back to the firewall and if i just let's say go to inbound rules and refresh this thing so there will be a, a rule for this port which is uh, 4024 okay so if i can show you let me check 4024 you can see local port and so if we check look at take a look at this thing then new server is started and at 4024 so there should be one rule for the port okay so let me just sort it by name and then i will search for remote debugging because that's what the name should be so we have remote desktop guys over here and then we have uh, let's there should be one uh, rule added over here maybe I can sort this out via date
okay anyway so uh, I will probably mention the rule or we can just google search it or probably they will have it over here let's check all right so that's okay uh, we, I will mention the rule in the description but this is what it should be doing uh, is it some somewhere over here that's okay that's this is not really a topic but here is where you create the inbound and outbound rules and probably there should be one rule because there is a long list I cannot uh, I'm not able to find it out actually but uh, if I just no 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 not exit open if I just go over here then this is 4024 should be there somewhere so maybe do we have control F no so I cannot f find it out guys let me just uh, take a closer look just last time if I can quickly find it out I will sort it according to the, this so this is RPC endpoint mapper and then we have any any uh, let me just put this remote address over here okay and then we can check so definitely not it okay and okay these are the port numbers right so if I go back uh, it is 4024 yes 4024 should be here four zero two four no I'm not able to find it anyway so I will check this out later and probably post uh, it in the description if if found so now our uh, the machine is ready for remote debugging if you see over here okay and you can go here to the, the options as well so where you can see TCP port number is this thing and if you see here permission is authentication mode is Windows okay so by default I have to use credentials of this machine which is the username and password okay uh, that is good so now my machine is ready for debugging now here I will uh, have to go to properties of this okay properties and if I go to build or if you go to debug then you can you see this option over here remote machine okay here I have to uh, specify the host name or I can say find let's see if it is able to find now some features which are required are blocked by the firewall so let me just allow it okay and this is on my wife this is the Wi-Fi connection so let me just try to search this thing again so probably if I go to open network and internet settings then this Wi-Fi which I am having should be private so you can see I have enabled the rule for private thing so auto detected settings are none okay now I will manually put the machine name which is uh, uh, visible over there so let me just open this again and here we have space explorer colon 4024 I will just put space explorer and then authentication mode should be windows okay and I will save this thing and I will try to run it again so now you can see operate operation taking longer than expected and it's done and now it is asking me for the credentials username is 
uh, in my case let me check for the username of remote machine so if I run a command prompt over here oh it open control panel let me just open the existing command prompt so in my case the username is uh, yeah username is this thing Sciatic enthusiast my channel name <sighs> all right so I will provide the username over here and I will pass enter the password and I will say remember my credentials and I will hit ok now if you see this error unable to start program this 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 okay now what it means is that uh, when we when we click on run okay this basically builds in backend and you can see where the location of that is so if I can show you that then you can see it is over here correct now in order to run this thing okay we have to have this app in inside this machine okay that is the first use case so the problem with that is uh, currently our app resides in the primary machine right and if you take another look at that diagram so deployed app should be on the communicating with the remote debugger and it should be on the machine so there are two ways for that first way is let me just create a folder over here I will just create one folder and I will name it app okay and now I will just share this thing so I will just say properties sharing advanced sharing if you are using uh, it inside a network or something just remember never ever add everyone because in this case whoever there is on the network can access this thing now I'm um, what we want is every time every time I do run this app or these files should be available updated file should be available inside this VM correct so in this case I will go over here and I will give for now I will give a uh, full control to everyone you just make sure that you add appropriate user and give them the control of write as well okay because we, we are going to write in this folder now I will say apply and okay okay and I, again I will say apply and okay so now you can see this is the path now my first thing is I want to tr I will try to access this path from my primary machine where the Visual Studio is so I will put this path in the run button and then you can see I can easily access it now what I have to do is I will go over here I will go to this properties which are there already then I will go to build and I will change the output path to this so what that will do is next time I hit run it is not going to make an application over on my machine rather it will generate the application inside this folder so you can see it is already it has already created this dotnet core okay so if I go to app let me just go to app again okay it's opening there we go now let me just try to run this thing run you can see it started building now it generated it inside the VM itself and it is running as well okay now probably what happened is that the target process exited without raising core CLR event ensure that the target process is configured to use dotnet core here is the problem I have created a dotnet core console application and dotnet core is not installed on this okay so for that what I have to do I have to install the dotnet core but instead of doing that uh, what I can do for now is I can show you or let's let's do it let's install the dotnet core because future will be dotnet 5 and dotnet 6 so let's go to the edge or I will download it in here so I will go to dotnet core okay now in this case I need a SDK dotnet core SDK but let's see so I will download dotnet code runtime for my VM because I just want to run that app over there so dotnet core this is a 3.1 
and currently I am generating if you if you have seen the application then you will notice that I am using .NET Core 3.1 itself so as I said this is a uh, uh, somewhat slow guys so age took a while there now if I open this folder you can see I'm using .NET Core 3.1 so I will just go ahead in here and I will say I will I just need this runtime okay so runtime is much smaller than the actual SDK and I will download it for x x64 bit and that's just it I will say save file and it is what 52 MBs in contrast in contrast if I also download .NET Core 3.1 SDK then you can see the difference between the file size so it's 127 MBs okay now I will just get this runtime I will copy it I will go to again to this machine and like earlier I will paste it over here so copy paste you know it's pasting or maybe it was so slow so that's why uh, it took so long okay now machine just got stuck yeah it got froze so anyway I will try to uh, copy it one more time so this is my machine I'm copying .NET Core 3.1 runtime okay copy go over here and paste now it's done and we will be able to see exe over here just like that I will run this thing again install so it should not take long let's see let's wait for it to complete this is the nice thing about video you can just cut it or you can forward it as well so you don't have to waste the time okay Okay, so now the .NET Core Runtime 3.1 is installed and probably it should no it didn't ask me for a restart so that's good so you can see C program files .NET so runtime is installed I will just close this thing and now I will just try to rerun this application so if you see now so again it has exited with the code and skip loading symbols module is optimized okay so let me just add one more line here I will just skip this console dot read line because the, the it meant is it is also possible that it is starting and it is ending so I will just run it one more time 
build started the application is generated and now yeah it is running inside this thing hello world okay just like that so that's it another thing is now we have the application over here okay what I'm going to do is I'm not going to uh, uh, run it from here I will try to attach to a process so for that I will just make it run infinitely so that I can attach to this process okay and then I will put a breakpoint over here let's say and then I will say rebuild so it will just rebuild and you can see the output of this is generated inside the VM itself okay and then from the VM I will try to run this application app folder dotnet core app 3.1 and now I am running this application okay so now you can see it is printing time now I will go to debug and I will say attach to process okay now connection time by default it says default but I want a remote with authentication I'm having a remote with authentication so I will try to find it one more time again it it is not found so I will just say enter the name over here so we have authentication right in case of remote so I can you can see this option space explorer and now it is showing me all the processes that are running in the space explorer so you can see this console application process which is running I will select this and I will attach to it you can see the breakpoint got hit let me just show you side by side now okay so we are at what uh, let's just wait for it to render okay let me just hide this diagnostic tools window and now you can see my application is running uh, I'm debugging in here and my application is running over there f10 thread dot sleep look at here now I will just continue I will say f10 and there we go isn't it good uh, in this way probably what is the best part about this is you don't have to mess with your system okay you, you will just have a coding environment over here and this is your kind of a development environment and most of the uh, time today's laptop comes with the 16 gigs of RAM and if you can arrange this kind of setup then uh, it is really easy to uh, look for the issues so you don't have to uh, go here and there your app will be only here so this is the kind of execution environment for it and then you can configure it accordingly and let's say you have uh, certain kind of things to do with the dates let's say you have to modify the dates and times and then you have to check for some alarming cases or something like that then for the, those things you don't want to mess up with your dates because uh, believe me that that's kind of have uh, effect on certain applications like let's say for example visual studio so if i just you know move forward my date too many times then it will ask me for a sign in because the one one month trial will expire and then if i want to continue using this visual studio uh, community edition then i have to uh, log in first okay even though i'm just using it for a day or two so for for certain kind of tests it's really insane because this this doesn't make any sense to have such kind of these kind of applications over here but it is really nice because uh, in this way you can uh, configure your local network so that you can help your uh, uh, f uh, colleagues right to debug their applications and whatnot so this is what the possibility is okay and that's what the that is what the uh, demo of this uh, main goal of this lecture so the demonstration is completed so thank you guys thank you so much for watching if you have any questions or anything that you uh, want me to uh, provide with the demo let me know in the comments below thank you for watching have a great day bye bye